Good morning, my friends. It is June 2nd. I'm Dana Corsello. So happy to be with you this morning. Today, I am celebrating with you Blandina and her companions in the Martyrs of Lions. Uh, June 2nd is their feast day. So let me begin with these opening words. Alleluia, risen Lord, deepen our desire for you. Alleluia. Alleluia, risen Lord, deepen our desire for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave such courage and endurance to Blandina and her companions that by their deaths, many hearts were turned to you. Grant that we, in accordance with their example, may also gladly endure all that is required of us as we witness to you in our own day, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture appointed today, I'm going to read from the epistle of 1 Peter. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in this last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay, that's First Peter. In that little pericope, that's a, that's a lot of theology um, and really intense theology, I might add. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith. And this scripture also talks about the trials and tribulations of believing in Christ. And the reason why it was appointed is because of Blandina and what uh, her companions suffered. So I want to share with you at, um, it, it's, this is tough. This is tough, you know, if you're triggered by violence, I'm sorry about that. Um, this is in our, our book uh, of the Episcopal Church, Lesson, uh, Lesser Feasts and Fasts. And I'm sharing it with you and we're encouraged to share it because of how people actually suffered for their faith when we wouldn't even think that we would ever suffer for our faith. I mean, it, it's been done for us, right? So let me just share a little bit. In the second century, after a brief respite, Christians in many parts of the Roman Empire were once again subjected to persecution. And this is, I'm talking the year 177, 177. At Lyons and Vienne in Gaul, there were missionary centers which had drawn many Christians from Asia and Greece. They were living a devout life under the guidance of Pothinius, the elderly bishop of Lyons, when persecution began in 177. At first, the Christians were socially excluded from Roman homes, public baths, and the marketplaces. And then insults, stones, and blows were rained upon them by pagan mobs, and Christian homes were vandalized. Soon after, the imperial officials forced Christians to come to the marketplaces for harsh questioning, followed by imprisonment. Some slaves from Christian households were tortured to extract public accusations that Christians practiced cannibalism, incest, and other perversions. These false accusations roused the mob to such a pitch of wrath that any lenience toward the imprisoned Christians was impossible. 
Even friendly pagans now turned against them. The fury of the mob fell most heavily on Sanctus, a deacon, Atlius, Maturus, and a, who was a recent convert, and of course, Blandina, who was the slave. Okay, so according to the historian Eusebius, Blandina was so filled with power to withstand torments that her torturers gave up. I am a Christian, she said, and nothing vile is done among us. Sanctus was tormented with red-hot irons. The aged Pothinius badly beaten and died soon after. Finally, the governor decided to set aside several days for a public spectacle in the amphitheater. Eusebius de depicts Blandina in particular, standing as the person of Christ. Blandina was suspended on a stake and exposed to be devoured by the wild beasts who would attack her. And because she appeared as if hanging on a cross, and because of her earnest prayers, she inspired the combatants with great zeal, for they looked on her in her conflict and beheld their outward eyes in the form of their sister, him who was crucified for them, that he might persuade those who believe in him that everyone who suffers for the glory of Christ has fellowship always with the living God. So this is Eusebius. This is his depiction of what happened. And just so you know, Fable has it that when the wild beasts were sent to attack her, as she was on this stake, they retreated. Even they couldn't come near her. And then this is the awful part. On the final day of the spectacle, writes Eusebius, Blandina, last of all, like a noble mother who had encouraged her children and sent them ahead victorious to the king, hastened to join them, end quote. Beaten, torn, burned with irons, she was wrapped in a net and tossed about by a wild bull. The spectators were amazed at her endurance. Eusebius concludes, they offered up to the father a single wreath, but it was woven of diverse colors and flowers of all kinds. Um, she was given a wreath of, a, an, of like an Olympic athlete because she actually, I mean, it was horrible, uh, but it was almost as if she withstood their torture and then finally relented. Um, but she was it just, you know, we, we can't even fathom what happened to this, this woman. We cannot even fathom. We cannot even fathom. So I share this with you because people, there are people who died, and there are still people who died for their faith. And so we just, I think, always need the reminders that we come to church, we come to the cathedral, we profess, we love, you know, it's just, it's just, we, we do it as easily as we breathe. And many martyrs before us literally died so that we could have this faith of ours. And I, I love this, uh, this in First Peter, although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And that, my friends, is certainly Landina and her martyr friends. So let me continue with our prayers. It is only in our deepest belief that we give our lives do we find life. That is very true. O oh Lord Jesus, you rise triumphant over death and the grave. Christ, our life, save us. Christ, the life of, excuse me, Christ, the Lord of life, raise us to new life. Christ, our life, save us. And now, my friends, what is it that you need today? What is it that's on your heart? What is it that perhaps enables you to give your life for someone else? Or what stops you from giving your life for someone else. In a world where so many suffer because of indifference or injustice or oppression, we know that Christ, our life, saves us. 
And Christ, our life, will save you too. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witnesses may be as bold as Blandina, and our love as deep, and our faith as true. Amen. Alleluia, risen Lord, deepen our desire for you. Alleluia. And my friends, may this day, may you be blessed, may God be in your heart, may the love of your neighbor persevere in you now and always.